All right, greetings. I'm Brother Jay Spence. It is Wednesday, June the 9th, 2021. Regorically speaking, you see I have my trusty squirrel coffee mug, and I want to give a little more love and respect, as I say, a lot more love and respect to my good old friend Marion Weedle, an old female friend of mine. When I say old, yes, we were more than just platonic friends. For a, a hot second, you know, we we officially dated about this time three years ago, a little over three years ago. We dated for like a month and a half, and um, it's all good. It's all good. There's a reason for that. There's no hard feelings. I was very thankful to uh, bump into her. Um, once again, her last name was Weedle. She told me that was Italian from her father's side, who was once connected with the mafia. She was part Italian, part German. Anyway, very pretty girl. Had more of that blondish hair, blue eyes or greenish eyes and blondish hair look. So I guess she had more of her German features or other European features. But she had an Italian last name. <clears throat> she had the Italian attitude. Very pretty girl. We had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun for that short, you know, month and a half, roughly we only officially dated for like two or three weeks, but before and after that, we kind of hung out for a good month, month and a half. And ironically, ironically, uh, she was working at this other restaurant that I worked at for a hot second, um, over three and a half years ago. And that's her, her pet pig that I got to meet. This picture was taken before I bumped into her again. Um, for the first time in like 15 years, she she was one of the sexy bartenders out at the Awful Authors near Towers, where I used to play with my old reggae band, The Seed. That's her little pet pig named Hamlet. She called him Hammy. That's her with the glasses. And, you know, very sweet, very sweet young girl. A lot of goodness in her heart. She was wild in many good ways. She was a lot of fun. Saying, uh both good and bad ways as we, as we all are, cause nobody's perfect, but, uh, we had some fun and we had to go part ways. Our little time of so-called chemistry and so-called intimacy d was uh, clashing due to the fact that I worked at Runner city schools as a teaching assistant <clears throat> or as a teacher's aide for uh, over five years. And then was transferring my day job to the hospital. Um, Salika, <clears throat> to work at the hospital through a Carillion. And I just got a position that I was uh, rejected from unjustly because of a mix up of, of, of their information. It was kind of their bad. I wasn't happy with that. I was roughing it, living in a rooming house on Second Street. And she was close to my neck of the woods, you know, and she worked at the same place that I worked at, a little mom and pop place called Lou's. And, uh, got her phone number and we kind of connected. So sometimes we who walk a spiritual path to be set apart, that we happen to be single men in this day and age in society. We, we dip into the world a little bit. You know, we dip into the world a little bit, even as righteous men and women for this, for you sisters out there, but as brothers, as righteous men, we're having to bear that extra weight in our cross that trod this narrow path. So we give thanks and praise. You know, sometimes we, we, we dip out into the world. And we find somebody who we think is a good fit and they seem to be a great fit. And you know what? Miriam was a good fit for me for that good three or four weeks or I could say a good month and a half that we kind of hung out. We had a lot of fun together, but I like to sleep at nighttime, wake up in the morning, go to work. Like I said, when you work through the public city schools for five years and you work for the hospital at first shift or second shift, you got to get, you got to get your sleep at night. You know? Special occasions I can throw down and stay up till two or three o'clock in the morning, sometimes four o'clock in the morning. And I like to, I like to drink on occasion, throw down and smoke and party and dance and everything else. But she had worked at the, uh, the restaurant business, uh, night shift, I think for, many years of her life. She was used to that kind of lifestyle, staying up all night. So we just kind of parted ways and we had a little clashing because of that. No hard feelings at all. 
<clears throat> as a matter of fact, me and my present lady, Pam, my love, that I was able to uh, connect with and I was able to, uh, you know, develop that official relationship with uh, as I am now in this official covenant relationship with Pam. So it was only about maybe four or five months after marrying, just enough time for me to kind of, you know, recollect my thoughts as a single man still trotting this path when it comes to faith. When it comes to the true faith, according to Jah word and truth. And uh, I looked at with Pam. because That was another way of dabbling out into the world. To a public, worldly atmosphere like Martin's, you know, or like at Lou's or anywhere. You just happen to find uh, people. And you, sometimes you have to take a chance. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't for different reasons. But Marion had a lot of goodness in her heart. Uh, she had a great appreciation to animals, as I do. But... She took it to a whole different level, her love for animals, her love for her pets, her love for her pet pig. Once again, that's a picture of her pet pig, uh, Hammy. Her, his actual name was Hamlet, and she, she called him Hammy. And she kept him in the basement of the house that she was staying in when her and I were dating for that quick month or month and a half. I uh, first met this pig. He was about that size this time, like three years ago. She had him in the basement and she had her dog and her cat and such a great lover of animals. So I helped her move into this new house that she had just moved into right before her and I kind of went separate ways, but uh, I was still working at the hospital. But yeah, that little pig turned out to be a big hog, you know, and it was kind of interesting having this girlfriend with a pet pig in her kitchen of her new house, brand new house she just moved into. And I was almost this close to moving in there with her, but we had our differences. But it was, once again, a blessing for me and my my queen, my present uh, spiritual wife, Pam, to bump into Marion at uh, the grocery store about a year and a half ago. Pam was a little jealous at first, but I had to explain to her, no, this is, I haven't talked to her since before I've met you. We're just friends. We don't talk to each other. And as a matter of fact, I think she had a new boyfriend or some guy friend with her at the time. But we said hello to each other. What's up? How's it going? Good. All right. Cool. Good to see you. Just short and sweet. To show there is no hard feelings at all. So I'm really saddened to hear it. just today. Actually, I, I heard uh, a few days ago this past weekend on social media that she had passed away this past week. Peace. Shalom. And ironically, this uh, this young woman in her early to mid 30s, she was not only a party animal and we had some fun together. We went hiking a couple times and did some fun things and stayed up late partying and drinking and smoking. Of course, I drink in moderation because of my faith and because of who I am spiritually. But she actually came with me to fellowship with uh, the Messianics. The Hebrew roots and messianics in uh, central Virginia, a good 45 minute drive from here in uh, Roanoke, Virginia, of our hometown here in the city to the sticks out there at a place called Shalom Ridge, a messianic, you know, Torah based community of good people, fellow Torah observant, born again or begotten again, brothers and sisters in Yeshua, through Christ Yeshua, the Messiah, through Yahweh's kingdom. They are not. Most of them are not uh, fellow elect Rastafari as I am, as far as that further fulfillment of prophecy, of Rastafari, but they are fellow tour observant, born again brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus, you know, in, in Yeshua, the Messiah, or the Mashiach in the first advent, is I and I Lord and Savior. So I have love for them in the spirit of Christ, that, that same true spirit of Messiah. A lot of my closest of potential spiritual kin despite the other Eurocentric and Zionist influences that kind of cloud up the, the cloud up the vision amongst fellow tour observant ones, and even born again, brothers and sisters, born again, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, Yeshua. You know, I can say the same thing about my Christian friends that are genuine Christians today, even though, the, even though most of them are still caught up in dispensationalism and all that stuff. So Mary and actually being raised Catholic, <clears throat> having a very, Hard life, traumatized, abused severely. 
as a young girl. And that's all I need to say on this video. Something she shared with me in much more detail that I'm not going to share on this video. That's her business. Well, I'm going to say rest in peace. Rest in shalom. Sister Marion, she came with me to the Hamiltons on a couple uh, Shabbats, or maybe on a Sabbath day. And the second time was on the Feast of Weeks, <clears throat> Shavuot of three years ago at the Hamiltons. And the Hamiltons at Shalom Ridge, acknowledged the, they acknowledged the first more popular Shavuot as the other Eurocentric Yahudim, all due respect. You know, but once again, it's about keeping the commandments in the season, within the season, according to heart and mind spirit. With that being said, I'd like to pay a big respects to Marianne Weedle, rest in peace girl. I always have a special place in my heart for you. You helped me out back then financially and mentally. Thank you. This is for you. Sometimes people have to self-medicate in certain ways which may not be in moderation according to the proper levels of moderation that our human bodies can take but anyway all due respect <sighs> saddens me because she, she, she had a really unique special love for animals which inspired me to have more love for animals uh, I've always been a lover of animals as well as children and people like that she came with me to the Hamilton's at Shalom Ridge and a lot of people loved her her spirit and playing with the kids, but they're picking up certain hedonistic characteristics, you know, that and I think they were kind of being over judgmental and judging me a little too much. You know, why why do we have to be so judgmental and parasitical amongst fellow Torah observant ones called to be through Yahweh's kingdom or through Josh's kingdom in Christ, through Christ Yeshua? Especially in Christ Jesus Yeshua. What's wrong with us as human beings we create anyway not to get into that that's another lecture for another time but Mary you know by Yah's grace or by Jah's grace Miriam was exposed to some of that being raised Catholic as an Italian girl you know as an Italian American girl whose last name was Weedle that she said had a connection with some kind of mafia or ex mob who knows who knows I know when people are damaged because of severe trauma and abuse Whatever kind of abuse it might be, severe abuse, it creates a lot of internal demons that a lot of us can't even fathom, even though all of us have our internal demons and baggage because of what we've been through. I know I do, but that's a whole different category than what we're speaking of innocent children being taken advantage of to that degree. And it creates a lot of internal demons that need that extra self-medication, even, even if that self-medication is not balanced and it leads to alcoholism severe drinking or drug addiction, things that lead to one's um, eventual death, which is sad. Their lifespan is short. But I know that she had a, a certain faith in the basic good news gospel of Yah's grace, with the Most High Yah's grace through Christ Jesus, through Yeshua, whose name is Yeshua and his true Hebrew name, but as we know, is Jesus Christ. She saw... She told me when we were together that she saw the Passion of the Christ when it came out on the big screen. And I saw the Passion of the Christ movie directed by Mel Gibson when it came out on the big screen back in was it 2003 or 2004, something like that. But it made her cry. She told me you know, it made her shed a tear. So the impact of the basic good news gospel, despite the lures of, of Catholicism and Romanism and other forms of counterfeit Christianity, such as Protestantism and these things that create all this confusion, you know, this whole religious Babylon. Despite that, you have the power of the good news gospel within true Protestant Christians, even true genuine Catholic Christians that are not, ju not just so-called Catholic, but true born-again brothers and sisters in Christ. Because that basic good news gospel of what is really called the Brihad Shah in the Hebrew, the Renewed Covenant, is powerful. That is the fulfillment of the Torah and the prophets. Even those who are still caught up in counterfeit Christianity or whatever, Catholicism, Protestantism, is still, it's still that impact of the gospel through God's grace, through God's grace, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit.
Aliyai, Selassiei, Adoniai, Yeshuaai. So let's give thanks and praise for that. Rest in peace, Miriam. It's been surreal to me these past few days to have one of my ex-girlfriends. Because really, whenever we connect with somebody intimately or physically, I've come to find out in the previous in the previous years in my walk with the Most High Jah, my own spiritual walk with Hashem, by Hashem Yeshua, both in spirit and in truth, that sexual intercourse is marriage. And we treat it like recreation sometimes. And even I, who as a righteous man, you know, even the street preacher, as a true born again son of the Most High Jah, and as a righteous man of, of Elohim, or a true righteous man of God, my, myself, that I am. You know, I'm not trying to be self-righteous, but I am a righteous man of God. Therefore, I'm held more accountable for what I do and don't do. And I, I really gave her a chance because the revelation had already been given to me through a proper interpretation of the Torah, a proper interpretation of the scriptures in the Bible of what spiritual marriage really is. So the hands of karma judgment, even if it was my right on my, on my behalf to rightfully put an end to a so-called official love covenant relationship, I realize, you know, um, I've had to pay back the hands of karma judgment through low income, in between jobs, losing money that was happening around that time, you know, because realistically, I was supposed to pay her biological father <clears throat> so many shekels of silver. And this, this is the same with every single ex-girlfriend that I've had or young woman that I've been intimate with, even your concubines and your one night stands. Okay. See, when that woman sleeps with, when that woman sleeps with another man or has sexual intercourse with another man, then she's been defiled to you. Now she's that man's spiritual wife. <clears throat> so true marriage is, true spiritual marriage is not a document. It is not a written document, regardless of what the ism and schisms of false religion say, even within you know, counterfeit Christianity and Judah, Judaism as opposed to true fulfilled Judaism as a way of life. Or Islamism as opposed to true Islam as a way of life. That true fulfilled beta Christian faith. That true original pre-Constantine Christian faith as a liberty. Which is, which is parallel to that true Israelite faith as a way of life. Through Messiah, through Christ. Through that fulfilled Christ spirit. So, you know, yeah makes sense. Now I've been with Pam for the past two and a half, going on three years now. Hallelujah. I've been, I'm blessed. I'm receiving an increase in my finances. I've been a nice house. You can't make this up. Anyway, rest in peace, Marion. I hope that I catch you on the flip side one day. I'm able to thank you because it saddens me. I never got to pay you back that money that I had planned on paying you back sometime here in the next year or two when I get more of, my, more of my money stacked up. But I know that you would probably tell me, you know, shut the F up, don't worry about it. No, keep it, don't worry about it. You know, That's what I loved about you. Anyway, shalom. Rest in power. Rest in power, Sister Miriam. He was still saved or that spark of light was able to at least give you some grace time whether you come back in another incarnation in this present life or into the past or you've made it to the gates of heaven that spiritual realm with the ancestors of that great day of resurrection and judgment I hope I hope that those uh, Torah portion studies that we had that one time was able to sink in some things that I was able to share with, with her Anyways, we having a, I think they're having a remembrance of Marion Weedle at uh, Awful Authors on the 26th of this month, which is on a Shabbat, which is on a true seven-day Sabbath, but my lady Pam and I are going to go out there to pay respects. Anyways, so <clears throat> what I wanted to share with you in this video actually was none of this. I just wanted to pay respects to Marion, but, uh. This is my profile. This is my present up-to-date Facebook profile. It's me and my lady Pam, happy as ever. And 
we got a lot of things to go through here, a lot of things to, to talk about, a lot of things to speak of. Um, you know, you have the true original Hebrew Israelites, the true ethnic Hebrew Israelites according to flesh, according to actual lineage of the ethnic tribe of, of Yehuda, the ethnic tribe of Judah, identified in connection with so-called African Americans and so-called black people here in North America and parts of South America and the West Indies as well, that Southern Kingdom. Right? So you have that. You have uh, fellow righteous Gentiles who may not be in the movement of Rastafari, that new name regarding further fulfillment, you know, that further fulfillment of prophecy in uh, Ethiopia, or that connection with the monarchy of David in Judeo-Christian Ethiopia. However, there's other fellow ethnic Israelites and or fellow spiritual Israelites, like this brother with with the uh, blue shirt. You know, he goes by the Seven Trumpets Prepper, and he's you know identifies the true ethnic seed of of, of Israel. Now, he recognizes that he is, a, he is a spiritual Israelite through Christ, Yeshua. You know, through Yahweh's grace or through Jah's grace in Christ, Jesus, Yeshua. You know, and he is a fellow Torah observant, a commandment keeper, who also who also holds the testimony of, of Jesus Christ, whose name is, you know, Yahushua or Yahshua, meaning Yahweh's salvation. Um, so you have that interview with Ronald Dalton, who's an ethnic and spiritual Hebrew Israelite, a biblical documentary filmmaker and Hebrew scholar. He's, you know, proving the ethnic seed of the lost tribes according to lineage are identified as a lot of so-called African Americans and black people in the West Indies and South America, as well as uh, Hispanics. And many Hispanics and Native Indians, according to lineage, identified with some of the other tribes of the Northern Kingdom as well. So... Once again, regardless of what you know, whether we're called from the natural seed people or like myself, called from the righteous Gentiles of other nations, it says that the, the Bible is not a piece of cake. The Bible is meant to be bread, not uh, <laughs> Salika. The Bible is meant to be bread for daily use, not cake for special occasions. So, day and night, we must meditate in our Torah. We must me meditate in the Bible and read the scriptures. That is our Heavenly Father's word. That is the foundation of Jah's word and the teachings of his majesty. Ali Salasiai. For my part, I glory in the Bible. So let's go on to the fact that uh, salvation is also extended to the Gentiles. Many of the righteous Gentiles of other nations grafted in. First to the ethnic Yehudi, the ethnic Ethiopian and Hebrew Israelite, according to flesh, then to the righteous Gentiles of other nations, such as Europeans and Asians. And, you know, so, so Israel is a spiritual family. <clears throat> true Israel is that true core body of Christ. Those who keep the commandments of the Most High Yahweh, those who love and keep Jah's commandments, and hold the testimony of Messiah, that first advent. Not Antichrist Jesus, as we see you know, on the, the far right, but that Caesar Borgia versus the true you know, dreadlock Jesus Christos or Yahushua, I and I, Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is the Messiah in the first advent. You know, you have that Antichrist Jesus versus the true Christ Jesus, Yeshua. It says uh, the role of the Gentiles, you know, whites, Euros, and Asians in Rastafari, a fellow Rastafari brethren amongst. Fulfilled Israelites of spirit as true Christians. Here's a, a link of Priest Isaac, the uh, Bobo Shante Rasta, says the Bible proves that Africa is one nation. So his take is the whole continent of Mother Africa, including Arabia and parts of the Middle East, is that promised land, that original land of Canaan, of that promised land given to the great prophet Abraham through Isaac and Jacob, through the great prophet Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. We have uh, some good reggae music, fellow ethnic Yehudi Rasta and righteous Gentile Rasta, who are all, all of us grafted in through Judah. The 
the lion of the tribe of Judah-ish people, you know, through his, his majesty, Haile Selassie, as the king of kings in, in Christ, Yeshua, grafted in through Jah's kingdom. We have that third eye, Haliai, Selassie, I, Rastafar, I. Um, and so I shared this post uh, yesterday. It says, Facebook keeps showing me post that I sent out a year ago. Apparently, I was sounding the trumpet so much that it must have retired. Hopefully, somebody paid attention. Now I just promote peace and love. Job blessings to mankind. So I'll do respect. I just how I feel because I, I know a lot of uh, a lot of uh, posts will pop up giving me the option if I want to share it. You know, from this time last year about, hey, there's a lot of fake news and Babylon's media and all, etc., etc. I was planting seeds and Throwing little, throwing little truth bombs and darts at people and social media that might, and some people picked up on it, and some people got angry, and you have all this divide and conquer through politics, and now everyone's everybody's getting back to normal, taking their face mask off because they got their vaccination, and it's a continuous satanic mind game. It's like Babylon system has become a funhouse through the social media and through every. It's just ridiculous, man. So I use this. I use Facebook. And social media is a platform to shine light. And I realized that there's uh, a fellow ethnic Hebrew Israelite brother in, in Christ, Yeshua, you know, through the Messiah. He has his own you know, fulfilled scripture, you know, proper proper translations of the original Paleo-Hebrew, that Phoenician Hebrew from the ancient times. We have a connection of you know, Falasha, Ethiopian Jews who are also Orthodox Christians, it's Ethiopian, you know, true Ethiopian Orthodox Christians, the faith of His Majesty, Selassie. I. We have His Majesty. We go with His Majesty, Eli Selassie, the Moshiach ben David, the King of Kings, for the fulfillment of prophecy. I Rastafari praises to Jah the Almighty. We have the manifestation of His Majesty. King Alpha, Queen Omega, and for his men, I'll do respect. The lions, I and I lions, and Jah Kingdom. We have that connection with the chakras, His Majesty, Haliai, Selassie, and the seven lights, the seven chakras. We have the seven chakras. Seven lights of the menorah lamp. But then, yeah, Salas, yeah. We have that connection with the great Buddha. <clears throat> the great Buddha is the enlightened Godhead within. It's not a separate deity to be worshipped. That would be idolatry. The great Buddha himself, or Prince Siddhartha himself, never said to worship him. He says, <clears throat> you know, that, that oneness of Searching with God, or searching for God within self, within I self. You know, we have a lot of things. This is just kind of a fun little thing. Today, uh, that's a comfortable Tuesday night, forty-six and he played fifty. Uh, hold on, hold on, one second. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. You gotta see this. Seven and Marshall fifty is the current temperature right now in Winona. Ooh, that's funky. What is going? Ooh. <laughs> So yeah, you get that uh, tripped out vibe, the whole psychedelic vibe going on right now. Higher meditation, get thanks and praise. So right now we have a lot of that turmoil kind of simmering down between Palestine and the so-called Israeli Jewish government or the Israeli Zionist state. All due respect to fellow, you know, Torah observant, true Orthodox Jews amongst the, what I and I call the other Yahudim or the other Jews who are fellow Torah observant and that spirit of reverence and faith to Elohim, to the to the one true Allah or Elohim. Same with a lot of true fellow Orthodox Muslims or Muslims of spirit. You know, I'm not a, uh, 
an Orthodox Jew or a Muslim religiously, but spiritually, a yeah, Muslim, a Muslim, and that heart, and that mindset is one who, who has that true reverence to Allah's will, or to Hashem's will, that true reverence to Jah's will when it comes to true love and righteousness, that one love vibration and true reverence to our Heavenly Father's will, both in spirit and in truth. So, let's give thanks and praise to the Most High for this new week. And I'm going to say, there's something about the fact that it's this mainstream media that's pushing all this stuff at us. They said in the past few days that what's-his-name got busted for creating the so-called um, COVID-19 or coronavirus in a lab created from a bat. That so-called rumor that people said was a rumor or just conspiracy theories have come out. In the open through the mainstream media, the cats come out of the bag supposedly. Hmm. We were, well, I was saying that from day one that they probably created that in the lab. These powers that be, the, these uh, globalists, these satanists, these straight up devils in the flesh, they do this to create these this pestilence. And collectively, the Most High allows it to happen. He enables that to happen to serve as His judgment. See, the Most High can protect us and does protect us against all pestilence, all diseases of this whole wicked Babylon system. He protects us. He protects all of us against all of this turmoil through His judgment. Despite His wrath and judgment, He protects us from the pestilence, you know, and the, the diseases and these demonic spirits of death and gunfire and, and people just dropping like flies through diseases, gang violence, police brutality. Both ethnic Yahudim, you know, ethnic Israelites and Gentiles, you know, have their own generational curses, caught up in these gunfires and these these public shootings. They have like a they have like a mass shooting every couple of weeks. Now that things have gotten back to normal. Just as I said this time last year, people are gonna forget. But all of us true prophets and, and saints and messengers and witnesses <clears throat> sounding the shofar. Sounding the trumpets, being spiritually, we sound the trumpets through word of mouth, through allowing the Holy Spirit and fire to manifest and speak the word of Elohim, to carry out Jah's works and speak his word in truth, to love and keep Jah's commandments and teach others to do the same and repent and come out of Babylon, to come out of this matrix. But otherwise, you know, even though the most, the most high Yahweh or the most high Jah gives us strength and inner peace, inner shalom and he blesses us with protection and health and all those things. Most of all, it's that inner peace. It's that inner shalom through his through Jah love, through that basic foundation of his love and salvation by Hashem Yeshua, especially in Christ, Jesus Yeshua, or through Jesus Christ, the Messiah, as our Lord and Savior. That is real. And we see the different incarnations of that supreme angel, as Rastafari say, that supreme angel named Yahweh, the, that ultimate supreme angel of the presence through Jah's grace in which the Most High, Yahweh, makes himself known to I and I in the name of the Son and the Messiah, both in the first and the second advent through his imperial majesty. We acknowledge the previous incarnations, Salika. We acknowledge the previous incarnations of Mashiach, of Messiah, before he came as Messiah in the first advent through Yeshua. Through Yahushua HaMashiach. In the second advent, we see the Moshiach ben David, that throne of David, the reign, the reign, the return Messiah, or Christ, in his kingly character as the one true king of kings. Or as the for I, Eliai, Selassiei, for the fulfillment of prophecy, worthy to open the book of the seven seals thereof, in that new name, that precious name. Before that, we see these great enlightened beings. Is, is high-level prophet types or messengers or enlighteners that made such impacts on this world. And we have to separate the influence of the Nephilim, the fallen angels of Hasatan or Satan himself, and the fallen angels and the jinn and, and, and the spirits of darkness. We have to separate that from what is the true Mashiach and the true Messiah. What is the true manifestation of the Most High Yahweh, Jehovah, as the one true Allah Hayyam, or as the true living Elohim, what is his manifestation through God and the angels, through Elohim and through Christ, and through the supreme angel of the presence, versus the Romanized influence of 
these Romanized, whitewashed statues, statues and images of uh, what they call saints. These whitewashed statues and images of, of what they call saints that we pray to as idols. As components to get to, to Elohim, to pray directly to Jah the Father, we have to go to another mortal man who calls himself a priest. Don't even keep the commandments of God. This claims to hold the so-called testimony of, of Jesus Christ. Or, come on now. We have this influence within other cultures that crept into ancient Kemet. Before the earlier Kemet or ancient Egypt was more of a Yahweh, Jehovah-based faith. More of a true Elohim-based faith. Something happened. So we have to separate what is the influence of the Most High Yahweh or the influence of the Most High Jah, our Heavenly Father, through Christ Yeshua, through His Majesty as the King of Kings in Christ Yeshua, as I and I, Black Lord and Savior, the true Messiah, versus Antichrist Jesus, the whitewashed image of Caesar Borgia opposing as what they in the world call Jesus Christ. Which one actually died for our sins when it comes to the basic good news gospel, when it comes to the fulfillment of the Torah and the prophets, the faithful Israelite prophets beforehand? Who is it? Let's go to 2 Corinthians. Chapter 11. Right. Once again, 2 Corinthians. Chapter 11, verse 4. For indeed, if he who is coming proclaims another Yeshua. In this translation, or this biblical translation is the Hebrew lettering yod Hey vav shin Ain, which is Yahshua or Yahushua. The true Hebrew name of, of Jesus. So most of your translations will say, If indeed it is he who is coming, proclaims another Jesus, whom we have not proclaimed, another Antichrist Jesus, as opposed to the true Christ Jesus, or Christ Jesus, whose name is Yahshua, or Yahushua, even Jesus Christos, and his true original Hebrew name was Yahshua. Whom we have not proclaimed, or if you receive a different spirit, which you have not received, or a different good news, which you have not accepted, you put up with it well enough. See, this is uh, what is also written in the prophet Daniel, or the book of Daniel, chapter 7, talking about the so-called Roman authorities of uh, Constantine before um, and after 325 A.D., that changed the seven-day Shabbat, or that true seven-day Sabbath, to so-called Roman pagan Sunday sun worship, you know, the so-called first day. Nothing wrong with gathering in a church on, on so-called Sunday or first day of a new week. You see that in the original Ethiopian Orthodox, true Orthodox Christian church of His Majesty as a liberty. However, strictly pagan Sunday sun worship to ignore the Sunbit or ignore the seven-day Sabbath, Regarding the main Ten Commandments, and regarding Jah's main Ten Commandments is blasphemous. It is uh, satanic, and we're in this world to clore, but we're so used to it after centuries and generations and generations that we're just in this matrix. And the Word of God, the Living Word of Elohim, the foundation of Jah's Word, this great Book of Life, tells us what is the true Seven Day Sabbath. What are His main Ten Commandments? What are his dietary laws? What are the uh, Mohadim, the feast, the laws to keep the, the Mohadim of the feast, which are other high holy Shabbats and, and commandments with the love and keep? The uh, morality laws of, of sexual regulations and what we are meant to eat and not eat in these physical bodies of flesh and blood, which are temples, you know? So, basic guidelines and instructions. And Yeshua himself, or the true Christ Jesus, Yeshua himself, as our true Lord and Savior, and as the true Messiah, and that first original advent is, is, is our Savior. He is the one that took upon the cross. He is the one that we, that we accept in that advent as Messiah, and the first advent of Mashiach as our Lord and Savior. He's the one that was impaled and crucified upon the cross at Calvary to be that final Passover lamb, that sacrificial lamb. And the resurrection, after, you know, three days after being crucified and buried, he 
was resurrected, conquering death, conquering life. So that basic good news gospel that even one or two of my ex-girlfriends have in their hearts, rest in peace, hopefully that was enough to revive that. Because I may have shared this actual verse with uh, Marion once or twice in that short little time we were hanging out together. So, once again, it says in first uh, Yohanan Aleph, or Yohanan Aleph, or first John, <clears throat> it says, but whoever guards his word, in chapter 2 of first John, verse 5, whoever guards his word, truly the love of Elohim, the love of, the love of Almighty God has been perfected in him <clears throat> to the foundation of Jah love or God's love has been perfected in him who guards his word, keeps his commandments. Verse 6, the one who says he stays in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. Wow. So we have to walk as he walked. Well, Yeshua, or Jesus Christ, is our Lord and Savior and Messiah in that first advent. As the one true prophet of all prophets, he walked and he was the living Torah made perfect. He was the, the true living Torah made flesh. The word became flesh in that first advent. So, of course, he kept the Torah perfect. Of course, he kept all the commandments perfect to be the perfect sacrificial lamb. Right? It wasn't an average human soul, even a great, a great high-level prophet, the most righteous man upon the face of the earth. Even the prophet Job, or you know, Job, as much as he went through, could not even be worthy to die of his own sin. He couldn't even die for his own sin much less the sin of all humanity for all generations who accept him. Come on now, think. It was thought there was something more supernatural about Yeshua or Jesus Christ in his divinity. In his humanity, of course he was a man, he took upon the flesh as us and was crucified, he was beaten and flogged and he faced death just like we do in his flesh. But it was that, that perfect sacrifice. See, no other human spirit, no, no matter how faithful no matter how spiritual or righteous or set apart could be a worthy sacrifice. Nobody could take upon the flesh of man, live 36 years in the flesh, live 36 earth years and, and not sin one time. So the true definition of perfection when it comes to true faith and righteousness as a faithful Yehudi or a faithful Israelite, a true spiritual Israelite in Christ, which is parallel to a true Orthodox Christian spiritually and not religiously. We're not speaking of religion, we're speaking Liberty, true spirituality, you know, as a way of life, according to keeping Yah's commandments, true reverence to the Elohim as above, so below, fear and trembling, a fear of Jah love within one's heart that lead us to salvation through his grace. So we do our part to work at our own salvation through fear and trembling, through reverence and respect. That's why it takes 100% faith. That's 100% faith and 100% grace. So in verse 4, it says, those who say they abide in him but do not keep his commandments is a liar. So this counterfeit Christendom, Protestantism, and even Catholicism leading back to Romanism is satanic. It is the core of dispensation theology that has discombobulated the, the good news gospel, which is really the renewed covenant, as we properly, as we properly should say in the Hebrew, the Brihadashah. The Brahadasha, the renewed covenant, is that basic good news gospel that's been discombobulated from the foundation of its Torah, because the Torah and the gospel are one and the same. Even in the Quran, in the, in the Arabic scriptures, there's that connection. The plural form of, of, of one Elohim, or one Allah, Allah says, you know, the Most High Jah through the Allah Hayyam says, we have given you the Torah, and the gospel, etc., etc., Thus related to, thus related through the Prophet Muhammad, to revive what was being taught by these other fulfilled Israelites in Christ, these fulfilled ethnic Hebrew Israelites. I said Muhammad learned from a lot of the Israelites, as well as that uh, interaction with the angel Gabriel. You know, he was meant to revive that original Nazarene faith, or that true uh, fulfilled Hebrew Israelite faith in Messiah you know, through Christ. But a lot of, you know, Mohammedans and the first so-called Muslims, you know, they, they, got, they got caught up in this 
Islamism and this influence of other ism and schisms that watered down that original message of that, that original witness or message of the Prophet Muhammad and his followers. You know, so now we have this religion called Islamism as opposed to true Islam as a way of life. We have this, you know, need to put the so-called five pillars of Islam, all due respect, because the five pillars of Islam, even within Islamism, are good. They're good practical um, laws and, and formats for us to go by. It's a great blueprint mentally and spiritually to go by as far as spiritual discipline and reverence, daily meditation and, and, and daily prayers. But you cannot put that above the foundation of Torah. You cannot put that before Allah's Torah or Jah's Torah of life. It's not Sharia law. You don't even find that in the Quran. So where, where did all this stuff creep in? Same thing within Judaism as opposed to fulfilled Judaism as a way of life, which is parallel to that original Israelite faith, or that fulfilled Israelite faith through Messiah and the first advent. Now we have that ultimate fulfilled Israelite faith through his majesty as the king of kings that returned Mahdi or Messiah in the second advent through his majesty. Thanks and praise to the Most High. When I feel empty inside, <clears throat> when I feel vexed, you know, call upon his name. Hallelujah! Rastafari. I hope this was food for thought, you know, because we see what's happening. The Hasatan and this wicked Babylon system has created all these different denominations and religions and things. And what what is what is the foundation of Catholicism? <clears throat> the the core root of all ism and schisms within the so called Roman Catholic Church. I'm not making any blanket statements towards all so-called Roman Catholics who are genuine good Catholics and good Christians. But the core of all this, all the dispensation theology within different forms of counterfeit Gentile Christianity has put such a such a, a terrible bad taste in the mouths of so many people. Has put such a sour taste in the mouths of so many people that were once exposed through Yah's grace, through God's love, you know, through Yah's love and that basic good news gospel of, of, of what they call Jesus Christ. It brought them to the light. Even many of them become saved and born again in due time. Hallelujah. But so many turn away from the church and turn away, even rightfully turn away from religion, but then they have no other foundation to turn to. <clears throat> and they get caught up in the world system. Salika, they get caught up in the world system. And what do they have to maintain some kind of inner peace? That is all. You know, people turn to alcoholism and drug abuse and it shortens your lifespan and causes health problems and other personal issues. A lot of personal issues with so-called friends and acquaintances and ex-roommates. And I still love my ex-roommate Damon. He's still kicking, but you know, his alcoholism is bad. I'm not talking about drinking in moderation. This is why many of I and I, Alat Rastafari, as true fulfilled Israelites and true Nazarene. And true Orthodox Christians of heart, you know, we don't, a lot of us don't drink. I drink in moderation. I drink a little, you know, in moderation, I might drink a little red wine on a special occasion for feasts, to celebrate Joss Feast, or maybe on the weekend I might let loose. But throughout the weekdays, I don't drink. You know, it's not good for your body as your body gets older. And for, for those people who are struggling with, 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 Severe alcoholism, not the functioning alcoholics that, you know, whatever they get by, but <clears throat> extreme alcoholism to, to help numb the pain that we have inside. And these so-called Christian churches and, and these so-called synagogues, they're just not, they're not doing it, man. I mean, you got, I don't know, you, you got the, the so-called Israeli Jewish state of, of, of Israel over there still deporting these ethnic true African Hebrew Israelites and true Yahudim, according to lineage, from that land who's been there since the 70s, the 60s or 70s, for God, God have mercy. You got this whole political conflict within the, the other Jews and the so-called the so Israeli Jews and Netanyahu being you know, um, intimidated to step down and all this stuff going on. 
the ceasefire. The, the, there's been a ceasefire for the past three weeks between the Palestinians and so-called Israelis, and say all this stuff broke out, and they decided to kick out the natural sea people according to lineage, according to actual flesh and blood of the other African Hebrew Israelites. Interesting. I guess that's very sad, but and how much of that has just missed the radar of the mainstream news media? They talk about Black Lives Matter, which is always a good thing on a universal scale somewhat, but then how much of that has been hijacked by the powers that be to manipulate it? Should we not say Hebrew lives matter? You know, Israelite Israelite lives matter, you know, so called blacks and Hispanics, you know, and Native Indians and all of course all lives matter. You know, with that being said, of course all lives matter, but you know, we as the um Speaking of ones like myself, according to lineage, we as the righteous Gentiles have a part. We have a, an ultimate role to play, which is much deeper than attending uh, attending a protest. Nothing wrong with protests. A lot of protests are good. A lot of protests are necessary. But if it's all just protest, 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 and no influence of Jah word or true spiritual food in your life, then that's you're, you're caught up in the world. You're way too caught up in the world system. That's Babylon system's way of dealing with the problem. From that so-called Black Lives Matter. And then most of that has been hijacked by sodomites. Yeah. So Hebrew lives matter. And we should be there should be much more of a fuss and an uproar about these ethnic, once so-called African American, you know, black African Hebrew Israelites, ethnic Yahudim that have been rightfully living in the uh, that part of that geographical land of their ancestors. For many decades now, and what these other so-called Yahudim, because of the Zionist powers, the synagogue of Hasatan, Revelation 2.9 and 3.9, says, get out. And all hell breaks loose. Perhaps through Jah's grace, but through that extension of Hashem's grace, he's removing the sea people who are also of the spirit, keeping the commandments, holding the true testimony of Messiah, so we can clear out, clear out his footstool. And that land given to the great prophet and his seed, to the great prophet Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That is all. I love you all. Shalom. Till next time.